What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully, everybody's doing well out there. Today, as we kick off week 13, fantasy football talking running backs, who should we start and sit here this week? And week 12 just refuses to end, right? I mean, it's just been one of the worst weeks in fantasy football that I can remember maybe ever. You got players ruled out last minute because of COVID, games rescheduled, last minute injuries. It's just been a total cluster for a lot of people. Hopefully, week 13 is a little bit better, but we can't make any promises. It is... 2020 after all, but we have to try to supply as much information on a weekly basis that we can to make some educated decisions for our fantasy rosters, right? There's a lot of underperforming studs right now. Some big names that can you really afford to sit them because they really aren't helping your team out. We're going to be building a list with those guys today, so make sure you hang around to the end of the video. However, before we get in to all of the week 13 matchups, let's take a look back at week 12 and see how we did. And it honestly turned out pretty good. Now, the Baltimore-Pittsburgh game has not been played yet at the time of this recording, so none of those players are factored into this percentage right now. But out of the other 54 running backs we gave a start or sit designation to, 39 of them were correct for an accuracy percentage of 72%. Some of our biggest misses, one of the studs, right? Ezekiel Elliott, basically a must-start every week. Totally laid an egg on Thanksgiving, screwed a lot of people. Latavius Murray, is he the new number one in New Orleans? I don't know. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. And then Duke Johnson, even though it was basically one reception for 33 yards and a touchdown that put him over the top, he was still a miss for the week. Some of the biggest hits, my Manscaped must start of the week last week, Antonio Gibson absolutely crushed it. Kenyon Drake, he's making another late season surge. Can he do it again here in 2020? And then David Montgomery, a very pleasant surprise. Even though the volume wasn't there, the production was for the first time here this year. He was a pleasant start for a lot of people who had him in their lineup here in week 12. But now it's time to look forward to week 13. There is no Thursday night football kind of appreciative for that because these schedules have been absolutely crazy so let's dive right into Sunday here and the first matchup is gonna be the Cleveland Browns and Tennessee Titans and I'm kind of glad we start off with this matchup because it doesn't involve racking our brain too hard right pretty straightforward for the most part I'm just glad that you know starting the offseason of 2021 I'm not gonna have to hear the same old story that I've heard the past couple seasons and oh Kareem Hunt's gonna take away the value of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt's better than Nick Chubb come on this offense runs through Nick Chubb, and you can see it, right? You can see the difference in this offense with Chubb in the lineup. Kareem Hunt didn't do anything spectacular while Chubb missed games. No, he wasn't horrible, but he's better with Chubb. The entire team is better with Chubb. I think that's like a new saying here. Better with Chubb. That's going to be on a t-shirt. But Cleveland is 6-1 and one with Nick Chubb in the lineup, 2-2 two and two without him. He's only played seven games so far this season, but is still running back 18 overall in half PPR scoring. He averages the seventh most fantasy points per game out of all running backs with 16.3 points per game. And now he's rushed for over 100 yards in five of his last six games played. Yeah, he's going to be, re he's going to remain a start obviously here this week for Kareem Hunt. He's starting to trend down a little bit, right? He's seen his touches go down back-to-back -back weeks now. Plus his snap percentage has gone down now for five straight weeks. I mean, he's found himself outside of the top 25 here in the past two weeks also. He's just not one of these guys who's putting up huge numbers. It's a lot of Nick Chubb, right? But this matchup going up against the Tennessee Titans who allow the seventh most fantasy points to opposing running backs, it's still going to remain a start. He's still going to be a flex start, right? He's not one a high-end RB2, but he's going to be a weekly flex play in this offense, which really features the run. For Tennessee... Do we really need to discuss Derrick Henry at this point? I mean, he's number one in the NFL in rushing yards, number two in the NFL in touchdowns rushing, and number two in the NFL in, in carries over 20 yards. So he's a big bruising back that can break the big play with huge touchdown upside on a weekly basis, regardless of an opponent. Yeah, that like defines must start on a weekly basis. On to Las Vegas and the New York Jets. Now we got old man Thanos versus banged up Jacobs here this week and we saw Josh Jacobs go down there with a sprained ankle last week. Everything sounds like he's going to be okay and going to play, but this is one of those guys that we need to pay attention to here throughout the week. It's not uncommon for him to rest majority of the week anyway. We really need to pay attention to the reports on Friday and Saturday to see if he's going to be limited going into the ballgame because this is a great matchup for him going up against the Jets who allow over 18 fantasy points per game. Like I said, we're going to monitor the reports. If for some reason Josh Jacobs does not go in this game, Devontae Booker may become a start for me, so make sure you pay attention to the videos all week long. We'll change that around if we need to. And we can kind of say the same thing for Frank Gore for the most part, right? He's got no little Michael P. Ryan. 
Ty Johnson was a thing for like four seconds. A lot of people wanted to know what to do with him. He only saw 18% of the snaps. The Raiders allow over 22 fantasy points per game, which is third most in the NFL. Now, last week, Gore had 21 touches. His ceiling's going to be pretty low, right? The touchdown upside in a Jets offense just isn't going to be there on a weekly basis. The volume is, the matchup's juicy. I'll put Frank Gore in as a flex play. If you go into a matchup starting Frank Gore and really expecting more than 10 to 12 points and you don't get it, that's on you. We're not saying this guy's ever going to be a 20-point scorer. He's going to hover right around 10, 11 points. But if you're looking for a flex play, you're looking for some touches and some volume, Frank Gore could be that guy for you here in Week 13. Jags and Vikings now. And has there been a bigger surprise in fantasy football here in 2020 than James Robinson? I mean, I, we liked him in the offseason. We weren't expecting this at all. He's currently up to running back four overall on the season for half PPR scoring. And heck, he finished running back five in Week 12 with Mike Glennon as his quarterback. Yeah, Mike Glennon was the quarterback, and he still put up numbers, knowing that the opposing defense really just had to focus on taking away James Robinson. It didn't matter. Still had a huge game. He's now had at least 19 touches in five straight games. Last week, he saw 97% of the snaps, so you know he's not splitting the backfield touches with anybody. And the Vikings allow over 17 fantasy points per game. Yep, I'm going to start James Robinson once again this week. But moving on to Minnesota, I have a question for you, for everybody out there. Did your sphincter tighten up a little bit when you saw Dalvin Cook go down last week? Because mine sure did. I got worried there for a second. They had to help him off the field. And then within like five minutes, he's running wind sprints and cutting on the sidelines. So yeah, it looks like he's going to be good. It was his worst game of the season list last week where he finished as running back 26 overall. Had 82 total yards. But I mean, for the numbers he's been putting up here this year, this was a disappointment last week. But now a matchup against Jacksonville, who give up the sixth most fantasy points to opposing running backs, is a great matchup. As long as he's healthy, you're obviously going to start Dalvin Cook. Bengals and Dolphins and a whole lot of question marks here, right? We really have no idea who's even going to be active at this point for the Miami Dolphins. Do we see the return of Miles Gaskin? What about Salvin Ahmed? If they both come back, what kind of split do we see? A whole lot of question marks, and it's a great matchup for him, right? Going up against Cincinnati, they allow right around 19 fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. And if I had to give the small lead to anybody, it's Miles Gaskin as of right now, right? He was close to return last week. If he does come back this week, I have to assume he retakes the role that he had prior to injury with Ahmed not being 100% himself. A lot of question marks, right? Though, make sure you watch the injury report video later on in the week with Dr. Ethan Turner. Hopefully, by that point, we have a little bit more information to share with you, and we can really kind of pinpoint who the guy's going to be in Miami. For Cincinnati, not as many question marks, right? I mean, Geo has basically fallen off the face of the earth at this point. He now has three straight finishes outside the top 30 running backs. He's averaging only 12 touches a week over his last three games played. And I expect Miami to get a lead in this ballgame, which means Cincinnati isn't going to be able to rely on the running game with any part of Gio Bernard. Now, you see the numbers he's put up, or the lack of numbers he's put up here over the past few weeks. And last week, he played 78% of the snaps. So he's on the field. He's just not producing. And as of right now, can't trust it anymore. I'm going to sit Gio Bernard. Colts and Texans now in another matchup in which we hardly know anything, right? Does David Johnson return from his concussion? He's eligible to come off of IR here this week, but we still haven't heard. What about Jonathan Taylor? Does he return this week after being placed on COVID IR last week? Question marks, right? We need to understand if these guys are going to play or not because they really affect their team's backfield. Now, I would love to have Jonathan Taylor against the Houston Texans who allow over 26 fantasy points to opposing running backs but we don't know if he's going to play yet. If he doesn't, it looks like Naheem Hines is kind of the number two in this offense, right? It was going back and forth between, you know, uh, Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins. It seems like Hines has the more consistent value on a weekly basis. But don't forget about the momentum that Jonathan Taylor had prior to being placed on the COVID IR list. It's a great matchup for him. If Jonathan Taylor plays, I'll start him. If Jonathan Taylor does sit, I still want a piece of this matchup. Give me Naheem Hines if there's no Jonathan Taylor. For Houston, like I said, we still have no word on David Johnson. So do we roll with Duke Johnson in this matchup just in case? I mean, it's a tough matchup going up against the Indianapolis Colts. They've basically stopped everybody all year with the exception of Derrick Henry, who ran all over them last week. But a lot of that was due to the part of no DeForest Buckner for the Indianapolis Colts. 
Does he return this week? Because if he does, he's a game changer on the defensive side of the football in Indianapolis. That matters whether or not he plays or not. Because Duke is only one 33-yard receiving touchdown away in this time with no David Johnson from only averaging 7.8 fantasy points per game. I mean, he's still getting over 75% of the touches, and he's only averaging 3 yards per carry. Honestly, for right now, because I don't know the status of David Johnson, I prefer to sit both of these guys in a difficult matchup. Now, if DeForest Buckner does sit for Indianapolis and David Johnson is active, I'll start David Johnson. But pay attention to the ranking show later in the week. We'll get you some more updated information as the week goes on before we really solidify this matchup, because right now, we don't know a whole, whole lot about it. Lions and Bears now, and it's just fitting for 2020, right? I mean, we saw DeAndre Swift go out there, have a breakout performance, be named the starter, and then miss two games against Carolina and Houston just to make it back in time to face the Chicago Bears, who are one of the better defenses in football, allowing only 16.7 fantasy points per game. Now, last week without DeAndre Swift, we saw Adrian Peterson get in the end zone twice. Yes, it was only on two one-yard goal line carries that got him those touchdowns, but still, it was a pretty even split between AP and Carrion Johnson. This backfield is still DeAndre Swift's backfield if he can make it back here this week. All signs have been pointing to him playing last week did not happen. Cross your fingers for this week. He's not going to be one of those high-end running back ones, even a low-end running back one. More of a mid- to low-end running back two in a difficult matchup, but he's still somebody that I would start as long as he's active. For the Bears, we had a Monty sighting. We saw David Montgomery. Now, was it because Mitch Trubisky was under center? Did it help him at all? I mean, Mitch threw the ball 46 times last week. Foles has only done that one time so far in the eight games in which he's played. Now, no, I'm not saying Mitch Trubisky is, you know, Peyton Manning out there and opening up running lanes all over the place. No. However, there are some coincidences with this week's this past week's matchups that make you kind of think that Trubisky under center could really help out David Montgomery. He saw the most targets he's seen in a game since week five, and now he gets a matchup going up against Detroit. They allow the most points in the NFL to opposing running backs at 28 fantasy points per game. I'm going to fire up and start David Montgomery once again here this week. On New Orleans and Atlanta now, and I've been dreading talking about this matchup because I knew I'd have to talk about Alvin Kamara. Now, Taysom Hill has come in and just killed the value of Alvin Kamara altogether. So I mentioned it at the beginning of the show that we are going to be having a list today. And today's list is going to be five running backs that make you just want to say f- because they're absolutely killing your fantasy team here down the stretch in 2020. I mean, listen to this for Alvin Kamara. Over his last two games combined, he has three targets, one reception, and negative two receiving yards. What? I mean, that just makes no sense. Plus, last week, he played a season low in snaps with only 31 Maybe you can say, ah, yeah, they really didn't need him. They were resting him last week. Well, the week before that with Taysom Hill, he only had 33 in week 11. Plus, this isn't an easy matchup. Going up against the Atlanta Falcons, they're number four in the NFL with fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs, allowing only 14 fantasy points per game. And now all of a sudden, Latavius Murray is a thing because he's sharing snaps almost 50-50 with Alvin Kamara. He's had more carries. He's had more receptions. He's had more total yards. And honestly, with Taysom Hill under center, Latavius Murray is the better option in the backfield because they can really pound it on the ground. What do we see going forward, right? I mean, is this Latavius Murray's backfield? No, it's really not. It's going to remain a split. But what really made Alvin Kamara valuable was his passing game work, and that has not been there. Can you afford to sit Alvin Kamara? No, you probably can't. At this point, you got to, you know, run what you brung, right? You start your studs and just cross your fingers. Maybe you're totally stacked at running back, and you're, you know, sitting a guy who's top 10. First off, congratulations. But if you don't, I mean, you kind of just have to wing it. Could you imagine if you miss your fantasy playoffs because you sit Alvin Kamara and he does happen to go off. You'll you'll kick yourself in the backside for years for that. So I just can't say we can sit Alvin Kamara, but I'm definitely scared. I've been saying it since Taysom Hill took over. I'll start Latavius Murray as a flex option in some leagues just due to the volume he's getting in this offense as of right now. 
But Alvin Kamara is more of a running back two at this point with a floor right around 10 points, which isn't horrible, but the ceiling just seems to be completely gone. For Atlanta, does Todd Gurley return this week? I mean, without him, Ito Smith and Brian Hill, basically a 50-50 split, right? And they're going to remain touchdown dependent if there's no Todd Gurley, kind of like Todd Gurley is also, right? He's very touchdown dependent himself. The yardage just isn't there. He's been reliant on the touchdowns, but he's been getting them, so people haven't been as worried. This is a difficult matchup, though, right? I mean, this this is a tough matchup going up against New Orleans. They are number one in the NFL. They allow the fewest fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. They just faced off in week 11. In that matchup, Todd Gurley was running back 45 on the week. Do they split touches in a tough matchup, and now Todd Gurley's coming off an injury can't trust it. Going to sit him here this week. Giants and Seahawks now, and it's great to have Chris Carson back, right? I mean, we saw it last week. They worked him in a little bit slow, which is a little bit depressing, but he still found the end zone and helped out fantasy teams in a time of need. Now, he was outtouched by Carlos Hyde 17-10, to but I don't expect that to continue. They're working him in slow. I expect more Chris Carson as the weeks progress, but they wanted to start him off a little bit slow so they can actually have him the entire second half of the season here because they're going to need him down the stretch. Now they get a matchup against the Giants, who got right around 18 fantasy points per game. Chris Carson going right back into his weekly must-start status as long as he's healthy. For Carlos Hyde, unless you're in a deeper league, maybe you start multiple flex spots and you're looking for a player, he may have you know a limited ceiling but a safer-ish floor for one more week or so, but not somebody who I'm actively wanting to go out there and start. For the Giants, I mean, Wayne Gallman just continues his touchdown streak, right? I mean, this is what this guy does. He goes out and scores touchdowns. He now has touchdowns in five straight games and has five straight finishes inside the top 15 running backs. Last week, he saw 27 touches. Plus, now, going forward, sounds like we may be without Daniel Jones, which means Colt McCoy is under center, which can only mean more work for the running backs, right? More check down passes, more uh, usage on the on the ground to try to limit some of that that pressure put on Colt McCoy. And the matchup going up against Seattle, they allow run around 17 fantasy points per game. I have no issues once again starting Wayne Gallman this week. Rams and Cardinals and Kenyon Drake is heating up at the perfect time for your fantasy football teams. He now has back to back finishes inside the top 12 running backs and saw 25 touches just last week. He's currently running back 14 overall on the season. He's Verge, running back one on the season, and people hated this guy a few weeks ago. Don't forget, he also missed a game. He could easily be inside the top 12 if he can keep up the current pace that he's on. But what has changed, right? What changed in the past couple weeks for Kenyon Drake? Well, a shoulder injury to Kyler Murray is one thing. How do they limit the amount of hits that that guy takes on his shoulder? Uh, Limit the amount of times he's rushing, which you've seen as of late, Kyler Murray isn't running as much as he was earlier in the season. Insert Kenyon Drake. He's picking up the slack. He's taking that volume and he's producing with it. Difficult matchup this week going up against LA, though. The Rams, sixth best against opposing running backs in fantasy football. As for Chase Edmonds, still touchdown dependent because he doesn't see enough volume on a weekly basis to make him a safer start. As of right now, starting Drake, going to sit Edmonds. For the Rams, did we just see Cam Akers take over this backfield last week? I mean, we should have, right? And especially on that big run, he showed the breakaway speed-ish, kind of. He showed the vision, uh, but let's be honest. I mean, it's pretty doubtful. I mean, they're going to continue to split in this backfield. I mean, even last week, Daryl Henderson still had more touches. Akers showed that he could be the lead guy, though. He just needs that opportunity, but honestly, I don't know if we see it until 2021. In a matchup going up against Arizona, who allows right around 17 fantasy points per game, I really look for the Rams to throw it a little bit more in this game. A lot easier to throw on Arizona than it is to run on them. And as of right now, with the way this split still is with Malcolm Brown, Daryl Henderson, and Cam Akers, they're all a crapshoot, and i got to continue to sit all of them until we can see a little bit more stability here in this backfield. Patriots and Chargers now, and here comes Austin Eckler to save the day at the end of your fantasy football season. And we saw him get workhorse volume in his first game back. 14 carries. 16 targets, 11 receptions, 129 total yards, finishing as running back 8 overall. Yeah, as long as this guy stays healthy, he is a weekly must-start, especially in a matchup going up against New England. They allow right around 18 fantasy points per game. I'm going to start Austin Eckler here for sure. For New England, still no sighting of Sony Michelle, which means a lot more Damian Harris and James White. In this ballgame, I expect James White to have the slightly higher touchdown upside 
because of Justin Herbert and the offense of the Chargers. If they can go out there and continue to put points on the board, it's going to force Cam Newton to have to throw it a little more. Now, we didn't see a whole lot of passing work with James White last week, but that doesn't mean that he can't get it. Nobody got it in the backfield last week. It's not like he lost it to somebody else. I expect, once again, James White to be highly involved in this offense. They're boomer bust, though, right? I mean, this is not a safe start by any means. The New England backfield hasn't been a safe start maybe since, what, LeGarrette Blunt a few years ago. Outside of that, it's very boomer bust on a weekly basis because there's so many unknowns in this backfield. If I had to take a stab on one, though, it's James White here this week. Eagles and Packers now in such a great matchup for Miles Sanders. However, he's going on the list. Put him on the list of running backs that make you say f- because he's just not getting the volume right now. It's not This one isn't his fault whatsoever. He's averaging 5.6 yards per carry, but he only got six carries. Six? Just six last week. I mean, you, it's not like it was a blowout where they couldn't run. It was a pretty close game last week, so he should have been involved a lot more. But this offense in Philadelphia is just hot garbage more times than not. You never know which Carson Wentz is going to show up. But this matchup is great. Going up against the Green Bay Packers, they allow the third most fantasy points to opposing running backs at 24.7 fantasy points per game. Doug Peterson better figure this out because Miles Sanders needs to get around 15 touches a week to really help not only that ball team, but your fantasy lineups. Hopefully they can get it in a great matchup this week uh, for Miles Sanders. For Green Bay, the irritation continues. And you know what? Why not make it a twofer in this matchup? Aaron Jones going on the list of running backs that are making you say, F-, because there's just this split with Jamal Williams that will not go away. It just, it won't. He saw 17 carries on the ground, which is great. However, the passing work just decided to disappear last week. He hasn't had over 15 points in half PPR scoring since week four. Week four. I mean, really, the only reason he's ranked still as high as he is in the the, the season-long standings is because of his huge explosion in Week 2, where he had like 44 fantasy points. You take away that game and put in his season average, Aaron Jones is barely a running back, too, and it's because Jamal Williams just isn't going anywhere at all. I mean, last week, he also had 17 carries. It's a matchup going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. They allow right around 15.6 fantasy points per game, eighth best in the NFL. Can you really afford to sit Aaron Jones? Probably not. Just like Miles Sanders, Alvin Kamara, you really can't afford to sit it because the potential ceiling is matchup winning on a weekly basis. It's just when are those weeks are going to happen is the biggest question mark. As of right now, got to continue to start Aaron Jones. I'm going to sit Jamal Williams. Broncos and Chiefs now, and it sounds like Denver's going to have a quarterback back this week. So that that's a good thing, but does it really matter? Because last week they had no quarterback, so you assumed that the running backs were going to touch the ball a lot more. It's a difficult matchup, yes, going up against New Orleans, but Royce Freeman, Melvin Gordon, and Philip Lindsay combined for a total 101 yards and no touchdowns. It's a tough matchup, though. Uh, hard to ask a whole lot of those guys in that situation. Very difficult situation. Plus, Philip Lindsay did suffer a minor knee injury in that game. Does that limit him this week? Does he miss this week? If he misses, all of a sudden, I will start Melvin Gordon against the Kansas City Chiefs who allow the 12th most fantasy points to opposing running backs at 19 fantasy points per game. Wait and see a little bit on Lindsay, but for right now, I'll start Melvin Gordon. For Kansas City, we have another week, another great offensive outing, another abandoned run game for the week, right? So I think this is only fitting that Clyde Edwards-Hilaire gets added to the list of running backs that right now make you say F- because... They only had 19 total touches in the backfield between Le'Veon Bell and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. 19 total. It just doesn't seem right. I mean, it seems like they need to be running the ball a little bit more, but they are, you know, hell-bent on keeping the pass game going. And, I mean, it's hard to argue it, right? I mean, Tyreek Hill is basically unstoppable at times this point. But CEH hasn't had over 15 touches in a ball game since week six. It's hard to sit him, right? Because the offense that he plays in and the, the touchdown upside will always be there. But there's risk involved here just because the usage just isn't there. As of right now, I'll continue to start CEH and sit Le'Veon Bell. But I don't have that warm fuzzy right now. 
On to the first of two games on Monday night. Here's the Buffalo Bills, San Francisco 49ers, and the return of Raheem Mostert means the return of Must Start Mostert because this guy is just somebody you have to have in your lineup. Plus, he's going to be my Manscaped running back start of the week here this week. Just a reminder, after this show is over, head over to manscaped.com. Use our promo code HEADLINERS, all caps, at checkout. Receive 20% off your order and free shipping. Fellas, go buy yourself a Christmas gift early. Trust me, the products are actually pretty good. I'm not just up here trying to sell them. I actually like what they sell. It's good stuff. Go check it out. But Raheem Mostert came back, didn't have a huge game, right? He did have a touchdown, which kind of salvaged his fantasy day, but it was a tough matchup in his first game back going up against the Los Angeles Rams. Now, now he gets a matchup against the Buffalo Bills, who allow over 20 fantasy points per game, eighth most in the NFL to opposing running backs, and they were just torched by Austin Eckler, especially in the passing game. Could we see one of those big explosive games out of Raheem Mostert in the passing game this week? Entirely possible. Love the matchup here this week for Raheem Mostert. Now for Buffalo, the running game overall, overall is improved, right? The problem is both Devin Singletary and Zach Moss have improved and they're still splitting touches basically 50-50. Last week, 14 touches for Devin Singletary, 11 for Zach Moss, but San Francisco only allows 15 fantasy points per game, and these guys are going to continue to split touches. Now, Devin Singletary did have a fumble last week. Does that mean that opens the door a little bit for Zach Moss? Possibly. However, until we actually see a clear-cut number one in this offense, it's hard to trust either one of them because they're so touchdown dependent, and they're not scoring touchdowns on the ground. They're all through the air. As of right now, prefer to sit both of these guys in Buffalo. Second game on Monday Night Football, Washington football team, Pittsburgh Steelers. Just a reminder, this is being recorded prior to the Pittsburgh matchup. So if something crazy happens Wednesday night football, that will obviously change this and we'll update it later on in the week. But starting off with Washington, you want to know what's really scary? We really have no idea what the ceiling is for Antonio Gibson just yet. Yeah, Thanksgiving Day, huge game. But this kid is still really just learning the running back position and he's getting better, it seems, almost every single week. He's done what he's supposed to, right? Over the last five games against lesser opponents, he's had eight touchdowns. He's had a season high in targets last week also, which is what we really want to see. The biggest knock on him earlier in the year is he wasn't involved in the passing game. It was all J.D. McKissick. Well, last week, Antonio Gibson saw seven targets, and if that can continue... Oh yeah, I'm going to get really super excited about Antonio Gibson going forward. Now it's obviously his job. He's the running back one in Washington, but this is a very tough matchup here this week. The toughest he's had over this last five game stretch going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who allow right around 13 fantasy points per game, which is second fewest in the NFL. Now, I can't afford to sit Antonio Gibson, but is he my must start this week? No, he's really not. He's going to be more of a mid running back two for me this week, but this kid is so explosive and he can find the end zone that you can't afford to sit that type of touchdown upside. This kid's just got it and it would not surprise me. And in a difficult matchup, he can still find the end zone here this week. Now for Pittsburgh, once again, just a reminder, this is prior to the game. So if something happens to James Conner, don't come back to this and start yelling because it hasn't happened yet. Uh, But Conner's struggling, right? As of late, a lot of people getting frustrated with James Conner. The volume just hasn't been there. I mean, it's a difficult matchup going up against Washington. They're seventh best uh, defense in the NFL as far as opposing running backs fantasy point scoring goes. So the lower volume, the difficult matchup, the change in the schedules going back and forth and back and forth. Plus, coming off the COVID IR list, how did that affect him at all, if if any? Honestly, I prefer to sit James Conner this week until we can see him bounce back. This offense right now is based around the passing game, and he's not that involved in it. It's all Deontay Johnson. It's all Chase Claypool. It's all Juju Smith-Schuster. Not a whole lot of James Conner. Until that changes as of right now, I prefer to sit him in Week 13. Which leads us to Tuesday night football, the Dallas Cowboys, Baltimore Ravens. Remember, Baltimore hasn't played yet here in Week 12, so I'm kind of flying blind going into Week 13. If anything major changes, we'll update it later on in the week during the rankings episodes. But we're going to start off with Zeke, who's been on a roller coaster. And let's not waste any time. Let's put him on the list of running backs that make you say, F- because he's just been so inconsistent as of late. But I see a lot of comments from people saying, oh, Zeke sucks. I'll never draft Zeke again. It's like you've completely forgotten the fact that he lost an MVP caliber quarterback in Dak Prescott. He lost basically his entire offensive line, which had multiple all pros at multiple positions. Yes, offensive line matters in a running game. That's why Zeke's been so successful over the years. 
the Dallas offensive line has been great for a long time. People kind of, you know, gotten to take it for granted a little bit, but with these guys missing, you can really see the difference. The problem is in week 11, people loved Ezekiel Elliott, right? He was running back four overall. Everybody loved him. Week 12 comes and Zeke sucks because he finishes running back 54. Unfortunately, going forward, this is what we're going to see with Zeke, right? You're going to have big games. You're going to have horrible games. This is a difficult matchup. Right now, Baltimore allows only right around 14 and a half fantasy points per game, fifth fewest in the NFL. Can you sit Zeke? It goes back to all the other guys that we just put on this list. He can be matchup winning for you. He can also be matchup losing. Do you have better options? Uh, probably not. But this is what we need. we're faced with at this point. Personally, I'm going to have to continue to list him as a start. But now he's fallen back down the rankings, probably to that mid to low end running back two range. Not the automatic must start surefire, you know, top four running back uh, in Ezekiel Elliott. Now for the, the Ravens side of things, obviously we haven't seen him play yet. But in my opinion, J.K. Dobbins is the best option in this backfield going forward. We all said all along that 2021 is going to be Dobbins' time. However, we kind of saw the last time they played that he kind of started to take over a little bit, and this would be a great matchup for him to get back on track against the Dallas Cowboys. The fifth most fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs at 21.6 fantasy points per game. Now, Dobbins, uh, is he a surefire start? No, absolutely not. He's probably one of those deeper league flex plays at best, but I haven't seen anything out of Mark Ingram enough uh, as of late to want to trust him. Gus Edwards still splitting touches with Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins. The touchdown upside, the explosiveness is there with J.K., and that's the guy that if I had to choose one, as of right now in this backfield, J.K. Dobbins is the guy I'm choosing. All right, those are my starts and sits for the running back position here, week 13 fantasy football, but I've said it a lot today, right? A lot of things still up in the air, a lot of questions that need to be answered this week. So make sure you're staying on top of it with our rankings episodes, our injury report shows, our Saturday Night Live streams. That's where we give all the most up-to-date information. We had somebody come back to us last week and said, man, y'all said to sit Allen Robinson. Well, yeah, we did on Wednesday when they were said they were going to start Tyler Bray, but once they announced that Mitch Trubisky was going to start, that changes a lot of things. So make sure... As things change, you're watching the updated episodes to get the most recent information so you can make the best choices for your fantasy team. So hopefully you guys are having a great week out there. We appreciate all the support and we look forward to talking to you here the rest of the week. Have a good one. Thanks.